Hey guys, I hope you're doing well today. Um, I was just thinking of a sermon I saw on um, a few months back on Easter. Um, and the sermon was kind of weird because it was a, a song and a sermon. And I was thinking about two back to that time when I was I was watching this sermon uh, and the sermon was kind of in disorder in the best way and I was and I was thinking has the pastor lost his mind? Because uh, um, because like it was so like out of character and 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 um not the three point thing or whatever and I was thinking about this that this morning and I began to think about that this morning and um for some reason and I'm like um and the Lord said to me more people need to lose their minds and I need you to ask uh, people a question. Um, have you lost your mind? Um, which, uh, let me clarify this. When I say, have you lost your mind? I, I'm not talking about mental illness. I'm not talking about doing something stupid. I'm not talking about anything like that. Anything weird like that. I'm saying, have you lost ha what you think was going to happen to gain what he has planned for you? He, he said, oh, um, I was thinking about how humans love structure. We love structure. We love to know what was, co what is coming next. We love to know this, and we love to know that, and we love to know I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that next. But 2020 has taught us that life is unpredictable. And I was thinking that um, God is... I heard somebody say this one time, and I, I love it. He, he said... They said, uh, God is the God of surprises, and he is. And he's saying, in this moment in time, we need to let go of what we think is going to happen, what we think should have happened. And I've heard other pre preachers uh, say it, um, but the Lord asked me a question. He's like, have you lost your mind? Because our minds and or what we want to happen um, may not be, is not what God wants to happen. And we need to lose our minds, our thoughts, our wants, our desires to understand that he has his own wants for us. And we need to lose our mind and gain his mind. Because we spend so much time trying to figure out this and figure out that is was coronavirus sent from God or is it the coming of Christ or is it is it a sign of the rapture and is it this and is it that and we try to figure out what is going on and he's saying do not figure it out. He said, do not figure it out. Face it out. Yes, Lord. He said, do not figure it out. Face it out. He wants us to walk on faith. Not stupidity now, but faith. He wants us to trust that he knows what's coming. And he wants us to lose our minds what we think what what we think structure should be so 
we can regain his mind. I think if we spend too much time just worrying about structure, oh, this is not this way or this is not that way. Um, and he wants us to just let go of what we think um, our lives should be, what we think the church should be, so he could enter in new strategy that hasn't even been thought of yet. Uh, we are so busy uh, wanting things to get back to normal uh, or like um, wanting things to get back to the way we think that they ought to be is that, is that we're not open to something new God wants to do. See, we've been doing as a society and as the church the same stuff for years. Like, we've been doing uh, the worship team, the six um, member worship team or seven member worship team thing for years. Some churches do one worship leader on a Sunday. Some churches do one worship leader a song. We are so used to our structure that we haven't really asked God, what do you want to change? What do you want to shift about our structure in our churches and in our lives? What do you want me to shift or what do you want me to do differently? We're just so waiting for things to get back to what we think they should be that we're not really open to what God wants God wants to happen. We are open. We say we're open, but I think if we really gave God free reign, I think um I think we're scared to do that. And the Lord says, fear not, fear not. I've got your life and I've got my church in my hand. He's like, there's no need to fear if I want to do uh, worship in churches differently. There's no need to fear if I want to uh, structure sermons differently. There's no need to fear if I want to do things differently. Um, I hear a lot of people saying, um, well, if you can gather together, um, like, gather together, but have we, have we ever thought of maybe God wants to do even that differently, even the structure of church differently? Have we, have we thought of that? I think... If we're open to whatever God wants to do and and take the lid off what we think, um, I think God will God will do some wonderful things, and I think He is doing wonderful things. But I think we we still have our uh, mentalities that our lives should be going this way. We're just doing this until we could get back to normal and back into church again or back into school again. What if God wants to do something totally new, something he hasn't done ever in the history of the world? Um, starting with coronavirus, not ending with coronavirus. And I'm not saying God caused coronavirus. I'm saying God is using this virus to actually reset what he's doing. Um, his word stays the same, but his methods change. But sometimes we are so used to our methods that we don't ask him if he wants to change if he wants to do things differently, how he wants to structure things, because we get so comfortable and used to that thing that it becomes old hat. We sing a few songs, we do our liturgical thing, whatever that is, and he's wanting so desperately to show us new ways to preach, 
to show us new ways of doing worship, to show us new ways of doing church. He wants so desperately to show us new ways, but we are not open to it as the body of Christ, as believers. And not only churches, but in our lives, he may want us to do things differently. He may want us to job search differently. He may want us to work, um, do our business differently. So Corona has forced us, uh, if nothing else, it has forced us to think outside of our box. And that's what the Lord wants. And he wants... He wants to do things differently. And every time he wants to do things differently, something major happens to cause that. Uh, so I think uh, coronavirus, as devastating as it is, horrible as it is, can be the catalyst for different strategy and new ways to do things. And I'm not talking about just online church, although that is one thing, but I think even past that, the Lord wants to do things that he hasn't done yet. I don't know all the strategy, but I know he wants to do something new. We have to be open to it in our lives and in our churches. So basically, we have to lose our mind to gain his. We have to lo lose our idea of structure to gain his new strategy. We have to lose our, our idea of things to gain his mind and his want and his need. And when we do that, people will come flooding into the kingdom even more so than they are now. Uh, online church attendance or church attendance in general has gone up since quarantine but he's saying I want to do more than that I, I have new strategies I have new ventures that I want to do I want uh, he's like I have new new uh new things that I want to reveal to pastors, but they're so, they're so into what they've always done that, that it's, that they, they don't seem to be listening to me. And I said, y yes, Lord. So the question he would ask all of us today for our lives and for our churches, have you lost your mind? And when you lose your mind, you gain his mind. And when you gain his mind, you gain strategy. And when you gain, gain strategy, his strategy, you can rule the world. I sincerely believe that. So, basically, he'd ask you today, have you lost your mind? And just say with me out there, Lord, I want to lose my mind. I want to gain yours. I want to gain your thoughts. I want new structures, new strategies, new everything. And if you want to merge my strategies with your, some of your new strategies, do that, God. This time will 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 call for some crazy trust and crazy faith. Lord Jesus, give us your mind. Let us lose our mind so we can gain your mind. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So guys, thank you so much. Bye.
he just, the Lord just dropped something in my spirit. He said, the structure is in the craziness. He said, the structure is in the craziness. He said, the new structure that he wants to do in your life and in the, in the church is in the craziness. You might think it's topsy-turvy, but it's actually uh, setting things into a new order. A new order, his order. He's aligning things the way he wants to. All we have to do is let him and hold on for the ride. He won't let us fall. He loves us too much for that. He's too strategic to let us do that. But he said, the structure that we're looking for, the order that we're looking for, is in the craziness. Yes, Lord. I believe you. I trust you. I love you. Yes, Lord. We receive your structure. We lose our minds to gain yours, Lord. Amen. Oh, I should say that video was from 11 years ago. <laughs> My book has been out for 11 years, so it's not a new book, but thank you for all the congratulations. It's so funny because I posted that video by accident. And um, people are saying, oh, congratulations on your book. Well, Pictures of Silver has been out for 11 years. Um, I will put up the, there's a link to it on Inkit. I will put up the link to Pictures of Silver on Inkit so you can read um, the novel that's 11 years old. And then I posted by accident. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, what is new to, mo to some people? It's been around for 11 years. <laughs> I was 25. Actually, it was my first novel. I was 25 when I published uh, Pictures of Silver. And then at the time, I, di I didn't even think of putting it up on YouTube and and yesterday by accident because I was sending a friend uh, a bunch of videos and by accident I clicked on the wrong thing and I posted the video and I got all these congratulations I'm like what this book has been up for 11 years so I will put up the pictures of silver link over ink it so, so thank you. Um, I will put up the pictures of Silver Link over on Inkit. Um, thank you to everyone who uh, messaged me yesterday. And that is actually my first book. My second book is called The Soldier and the Stripper. And I will put that one up too. Um, they're all on a website called Inkit, so y you can uh, put that and I also have a book called Jesse's Destiny up there too. I haven't written a book for a long time uh, simply because I think I'm better at story storytelling than I am at writing. And writing is a lot of work. 
I don't mind work, but sometimes it's just a lot of editing. But I, I will, um, hopefully put up a real new book, um, soon by you guys. That Huntley, that Huntley Street video was actually, I was 25 when I, I did that video, and now I'm 36, so it's 11 years old. So that book is really not new, but at the time, I don't think Facebook was as popular or I didn't put it up on Facebook, so I guess that's why why all of you think it is new, but it's actually been out for 11 years. <laughs> um, that is, was actually my first novel, and I will put a link to that novel um, so you guys can read it for free online. And if you want an actual copy, just let me know and I'll arrange uh, how to get a copy to you. Uh, they're $12 if you want an actual copy. So, if you want an actual copy, just message me and I will get one to you. Alright? Bye. Thank you, Claire, so much. It's been years since I've seen you. Thank you, girl.